Hey, Emma, why haven't you cleaned the rooms for me yet? You know I'm moving in today to live with you and Max, right? Are you deliberately neglecting your duties to oppose me? Mom, what are you talking about? What do you mean by moving in with us? Why hasn't anyone told me about this? And how did you manage to get into my house? I'm certain I locked it before leaving. I've been texting Max since last week about moving in, so he gave me the spare key. You don't have to play dumb anymore. Also, why aren't you home right now? Where are you going? I'm sure you've gone out and squandered my son's money again, haven't you? Isn't that why you refused to move in with me? So you could freely spend my son's hard-earned money? Is that your plan? Mom, what on earth are you saying? Why does your voice sound so different from before? When I wasn't married to Max, you were always a kind and gentle mother. You never raised your voice at me during the two years I dated Max. But now you've transformed into a completely different person. A month since the wedding. You use harsh words and show anger whenever you speak to me. Do you still not realize your mistake? I did my best to use sweet words to ask you after marrying Max to move in with me. But in the end, you were determined to live on your own. You took my precious son away from me. And now you have the audacity to ask me to treat you kindly and gently. If I hadn't believed that you were a docile and obedient girl, there's no way I would have allowed Max to marry such a useless and stubborn daughter-in-law. Mom, I've explained to you countless times that I can't move into your house after getting married because there isn't enough space. You, Amanda, her husband, and her three young children along with Max. Normally, Max sleeps with his two nephews, and you sleep with your youngest grandchild. If I were to join now, where would I sleep? On the living room so far, what? Furthermore, I've already explained this to you numerous times. I'm not unemployed. I'm a freelance marketing executive. Today, I'm out meeting clients for a new project. Isn't freelancing a worthless endeavor? It's an unstable job and the salary is definitely low. But I've heard from Max that you spend your days at home huddled in the room playing games. At this rate, you can only be considered a useless child. The only stable jobs out there require going to an office and wearing decent clothes. Scarlet, I've been working tirelessly on a marketing project for a new game, testing it to understand its appeal. The salary I earn is not inferior to Max's. It's even higher. You know very well that for the past seven months, Amanda and her husband have been borrowing money from me, don't you? And isn't Amanda at home all day as well? Her husband is also unemployed. Are they not in a worse situation than me? How dare you compare my precious daughter and beloved son-in-law to you? Amanda is an incredibly talented singer, and she's passionate about being on stage. It's just that no showman has recognized her exceptional talent. And my poor son-in-law is only temporarily unemployed. It was just a regrettable accident when he collided with another car, causing the female passenger to suffer a head injury and bleed. And yet she had the audacity to report it to the taxi company and make us pay for the hospital bills. It's unbelievable, but there are such heartless and inhumane people in this world. Wow. I fail to see how being eliminated from over 30 singing competitions signifies talent. I understand Amanda's passion for singing, but shouldn't she prioritize taking care of her family's financial situation before chasing her dream? And about Albert. He should consider himself fortunate that the passenger didn't sue him for causing injury and driving under the influence. It's been seven long months since he lost his job, and all he does is drown himself in alcohol day after day. So before you dare criticize my job, maybe you should figure out a way for your daughter and son-in-law to fend for themselves without constantly relying on my financial support. What? How dare you insult my daughter's family in such a manner? Who do you think you are? So, it turns out you're not as naive as you pretended to be. Now that you're married to my son, your true colors are finally showing. Foolish girl. Don't worry. I can easily persuade Max to divorce you in no time. I never intended to escalate things and make you unhappy, but it was you who initiated the insults towards me in my chosen profession, wasn't it? You really have no regard for respecting your elders, do you? Fine. Let's forget about that. But what's wrong with living in a little house? It's a small sacrifice to keep our entire family close together. I bet deep down, Max actually desires to live here with me. But because of you and your stubborn insistence on living separately, he has no choice but to reside with you. Max and I have had countless discussions about this. And we agreed that after getting engaged and married, we would find a new house to build our life together. 
So why are you insinuating that I forced Max to leave your house and live with me? Isn't it customary for children to grow up, become adults, and eventually move out? Get married and establish their own families with a cozy white picket fence and all? Not in our family, it seems. Or perhaps you should consider living with me until you give birth to a grandchild for me. Then, once the child reaches the age of five, we can think about moving out. That way, the child and I can develop a close bond. After that, we can sell your house and use the money to make a music video for Amanda. I'm confident that if you make that sacrifice, both Amanda and I will shower you with love and appreciation. What? You expect me to sell my house merely to fulfill Amanda's dream? Not everyone who grabs a microphone is destined to become a famous singer. That is an absurd proposition and I absolutely refuse to sell my house for such an outrageous reason. I believe this conversation has become utterly meaningless. Ha! Huh, I knew it! You're nothing but a selfish woman who cares only about herself. Well, guess what? I have a backup plan, and it's going to turn your world upside down. Instead of you moving into my house, Amanda's family and I will move into yours. What? Are you out of your mind? No, I'm really quite serious. I paid a little visit to your precious house, and do you know what I found? Five bedrooms. It's an absolute waste for just the two of you. Why on earth do you need so many rooms and such a grand house? And to top it off, you have the audacity to occupy the biggest room. I have plans for my future. I want to have three children, which means I need those extra bedrooms. And yes, I plan to hire a full-time nanny because I have a career to maintain. And how do you even know that my bedroom is the biggest? Did you invade my privacy and snoop around? Privacy? <laughs> That's a luxury you don't deserve. This is my son's house. And as his mother, I can go wherever I please without needing your permission. Lazy is what you are. You haven't even had children yet. And you're already thinking of outsourcing their care? Unacceptable. With all those empty rooms, it only makes sense for my entire family to move in with you. I'll have one room. Amanda and her husband can have another. My two boys can share and my little girl can have the last one. It's the most logical arrangement. And I suggest you give up the big bedroom to Amanda and her husband to settle for the smaller one on the first floor. Absolutely not. The bedroom on the first floor is the smallest because I designated it for the nanny. You have no right to barge into my house without consent and demand such absurd things. I won't allow it. Mom, listen carefully. Get out of my house right this instant. Lock the door behind you and throw the spare key back through the gap of the door. If you don't comply, I will take matters into my own hands. And trust me, you won't like the outcome. What? What are you even threatening me with? You're nothing but an arrogant, uncivilized woman. Don't you understand the dynamics of being a daughter-in-law? I will make sure Max knows about your insolence, and he won't let you get away with speaking to me like this. Mom, you're being completely unreasonable. Get out of my house right now. Once I'm finished with my client, I'll come over to your house, and we'll settle this matter once and for all. Hmm, it's too late for that. I've already sold my old house, and my family has moved all our belongings here. There's no going back, and you won't be able to come up with any more excuses to reject us. <sighs> what? That's impossible! You must leave my house, or I'll call the police and report your trespassing. Call the police? Are you really going to call the police on your own mother-in-law and your own sister-in-law's family? <laughs> Go ahead. Do it. Don't forget, my son is your husband and the rightful owner of this house. You're the one who should be leaving. You clearly have no idea who you're messing with. I will make sure to inform Max about your insolence, and he won't let you get away with it. Oh, by the way, the moving service has arrived. I have instructed them to move in and place your belongings in the smaller bedroom. The kids are already falling in love with this house. <laughs> you better come back here early and cook lunch and dinner for us. Or I'll make sure Max knows about your insolence. He will beat you up. For sure. What? You can't do that. Get out of my house right this instant. <laughs> Max?
what the hell is happening in our house? Your manipulative mother and Amanda's family have forcefully invaded our home. And you conveniently kept me in the dark? She claims to have texted you a week ago, but why didn't you have the decency to inform me? We had an agreement, remember? We clearly agreed not to live with them. Calm down, Emma. I understand we had an agreement, but I can't simply abandon my own mother, can I? I didn't tell you because I knew you would throw a fit and create unnecessary drama. Furious? Oh, you bet I am. You've broken our agreement. Your mother sent people to move all our belongings into the tiny bedroom on the first floor. This is my home. Why should someone else get the best of it? It's not fair. And let me remind you, I never consented to your mother moving in, let alone your sister's family. Is it too much to ask for a little respect in this relationship? That's enough. You keep voicing your opinions and desires. But have you ever considered what I want? Is it wrong for my mother to want to be close to her children? This is my home now, too, and I have the right to have my family live with me. Then why didn't you make that clear from the start? You made it abundantly clear that you didn't want to live under the same roof as your controlling mother, who always manipulated you into doing her bidding. Why the sudden change of heart? Forget it. I changed my mind, okay? But, Emma, I hope you can understand. She's my mother, and I can't just turn my back on her. You know I love you and my mother the most. I won't be forced to choose between the two. I despise being put in that position. I'm not asking you to choose. I just want you to find a solution that respects both of us instead of disregarding my feelings to please your mother. If you go through with this, it will crush me. What? My mother just called me sobbing, claiming that you insulted and offended her, as well as my sister and brother-in-law. What the hell happened? Are you still playing the role of the weak, victimized wife? How could such cruel words escape your lips? What? No, it's not what you're thinking. I just... I got carried away in anger and said some harsh words, but I certainly didn't intend to offend your mother or your sister. Your mother insulted me and belittled my job first, calling me useless and uneducated. I was furious and a few unpleasant things slipped out about Amanda's family, but they're all true. What? Just because my mother said something that upset you, you dared to argue with her so vehemently? Why couldn't you control yourself and apologize to her so she could leave? How could you not think things through? Go home right now, get on your knees and apologize to my mother. Slap your own mouth to apologize to her. If you refuse, maybe this marriage doesn't need to continue. No, Max, I won't apologize for defending myself against your mother's insults and mistreatment. How can you expect me to bow down and beg for forgiveness when she's the one who started it all? I won't let her walk all over me and dictate the terms of our marriage. You're being unreasonable, Emma. I can't believe you're standing up against my mother like this. She's my family, and you should respect her no matter what. I can't let you disrespect her and ruin our relationship with her. And what about my feelings, Max? What about the way your mother has treated me since the day we got married? She has never accepted me as part of this family. She belittles my accomplishments, insults my career, and undermines my role as your wife. How can you expect me just to tolerate that and bow down to her demands? This is tearing our family apart, Emma. Can't you see that? I love you, but I also love my mother. I don't want to choose between the two of you. We need to find a way to make peace and keep our family together. Peace? How can we find peace when your mother constantly disrespects me and crosses boundaries? I can't live like this, Max. I deserve to be treated with dignity and respect. If you can't stand up for me and protect our marriage, then maybe we really are better off apart. Emma, please. I beg you. I can't bear the thought of losing you. I just spoke without thinking. Don't take it seriously. People say hurtful things when they're angry. I promise to have a serious conversation with my mother and make her understand how important you are to me. I'll do everything in my power to ensure she treats you with the respect and dignity you deserve. Just give me a chance to fix this. But for now, can we consider allowing my mom, Amanda, and her family to stay here temporarily? We can use that time to gradually reason with her and convince her to find another place to live. I know it's not ideal, 
but considering the heated exchange between you two. Let's view this as a way for you to extend an olive branch and show your willingness to make amends, all right? Fine, Max. I'll give you a chance to fix things, but I want to make it clear that your family only stays here for a few days, and they have to leave before we go on the honeymoon next week. Not any longer. This is my home too, and I deserve to feel comfortable in it. I expect you to have a serious conversation with your mother and set boundaries regarding our living arrangements. I won't tolerate any disrespect or intrusion into our personal space. If things don't improve, I won't hesitate to take further action. Great. That's great. I promise we will work on resolving this as soon as possible. Mom? Where is everyone? I've been calling and texting Max non-stop, but he's ignoring me. If we don't hurry to the airport, we'll miss our flight. Did you all just leave without me? <laughs> Max isn't answering your calls because he's driving. We're already on our way to the airport. You were too low, so we couldn't wait around for you. We had to leave. What the hell? How could this happen? This is supposed to be my honeymoon with Max. You promised that if I allowed you and Amanda's family to come along, you would agree to leave my house when we got back. And now you're leaving me behind and turning it into a family vacation? Don't blame me. It's your own fault for being so slow. If you knew we had to go to the airport today, you should have gotten your lazy ass up early and been ready. But no, you had to oversleep and make everyone wait. Overslept? Are you kidding me? I woke up at 5 a.m. to prepare breakfast for all nine of you without any help. And while I sat down to eat, you forced me to get up and make juice for you. By the time you all finished eating, no one bothered to wash the dishes. Instead, you all just lounged around the living room, watching TV, leaving me to clean up after your sorry asses. And then I had to rush to the bedroom to change clothes. I've been slaving away for all of you like this for days, and now you call me lazy? Stop making excuses. It's your duty to serve your husband's family. So quit your whining about cooking a few meals. Cooking meals? That's not all I do. I also wash your filthy clothes. I chauffeur Amanda's bratty kids to school every day because they refuse to take the school bus. And your son-in-law? He's a thief. He stole money from my wallet to buy booze and get wasted all day. He even vomited all over the floor, leaving me to clean up his disgusting mess. And as if that isn't enough, your son-in-law has tried to sexually harass me multiple times at night when I've gone downstairs for a drink. When I screamed and fought him off, all of you came back and had the nerve to blame me saying I was causing a scene and that he was just drunk and confused me for Amanda. If it weren't for my faith in Max to handle things peacefully, I would have kicked all of you out a long time ago. <laughs> you think so highly of yourself, don't you? You believe my son-in-law is attracted to you. You must have seduced him, you shameless wench. You think you have the right to treat us like this? My son bought that house. If anyone should be kicked out, it's you. You're nothing but a parasite. Just remember the airfare and the hotel were booked with my card. In plain terms, you're leeching off of this so-called parasite. It's ridiculous. If I'm really a parasite, then what kind of daughter and son-in-law are they? They borrow $10,000 from this so-called parasite every month. You, you pathetic excuse for a woman. How dare you keep harping on about those measly coins. You're nothing but a gold-digging daughter-in-law. And now you have the audacity to accuse my son Max of being weak? He's far stronger and better off without you! Save your breath, Scarlet. I've seen through your manipulative games and your son's spinelessness. This was meant to be our honeymoon. A special time for us, but you've turned it into a circus with your demands and entitlement. Well, I won't stand for it anymore. You insolent little witch! How dare you speak to me like that! I've tolerated your presence in this family for far too long! Maybe it's time I teach you a lesson you won't forget. You think you can intimidate me? Think again, Scarlet. I've had enough of your toxic behavior, your son's negligence, and this whole dysfunctional family. I won't be pushed around anymore. Oh, you think you're so clever, don't you? Well, let me tell you something, Emma. You're nothing without us. You're just a lowly maid who lucked into marrying my son. I'll make sure you regret crossing me. Is that so, Scarlet? Well, let me remind you who's really in control here. I hold all the cards now. Your precious family vacation? It's cancelled. I've cancelled the hotel reservations, and you can forget about me paying for anything. 
You can sleep on the streets for all I care. You heartless witch! How dare you do this to us? You think you can get away with it? Oh, I can and I will. From now on, this house is mine. And you and your toxic brood are no longer welcome here. Consider yourselves evicted. You'll pay for this, Emma. Mark my words. You think you've won, but you've only sealed your fate. You'll regret ever crossing paths with us. We'll see about that, Scarlet. This is the end of the line for us. Don't bother trying to contact me. I'm done with this nightmare, and I'll make sure your family is erased from my life forever. I think you should get used to the idea of sleeping on the streets because from now on, this house won't be your home anymore. Oh, and by the way, the moving service works incredibly fast. They've already removed all your junk and belongings from my house, restoring it to its original state. Feel free to stop by the dumpster in front of my house when you return from your trip to retrieve your things. Although I can't guarantee the garbage truck won't have taken them away. Oh, I almost forgot. Please pass along a message to Max. Bastard, we're through. What? What are you talking about? You can't just kick us out of the house. Even if you divorce Max, he'll still be entitled to half of the house. You can't claim it all for yourself. I will sue you. Oh, Max hasn't informed you yet, Scarlet? That house is my premarital property. It means I bought it with my own money before we got married, so it belongs to me alone. Even in the event of a divorce, Max won't get anything from this house, let alone the fact that we haven't officially registered our marriage. Never married? What do you mean? We witnessed your wedding together, didn't we? Why are you saying it never happened? Yes, Max and I had a ceremony, but legally, we haven't completed the marriage registration. Due to unforeseen circumstances, I had to attend to a client and couldn't sign the papers. Looking back now, maybe it was a blessing in disguise. Perhaps it was a way to spare me from being tied to a dreadful family like yours. No, that can't be true. Are you joking? But if you kick us out now, where are we supposed to go? Well, that's not my concern anymore, is it? Are we complete strangers now? Besides, you can go back to wherever you came from. It's none of my business. You heartless woman! How can you do this to us? We trusted you, welcomed you into our family, and now you're throwing us out into the streets? I won't let you get away with this. Ugh, oh, spare me your melodramatic, Scarlet. You and your family have been nothing but a burden to me since the day I entered this household. I've endured your insults, your laziness, and your son-in-law's disgusting behavior for far too long. It's time for me to take control of my life and rid of myself of your toxic presence. Toxic presence? You ungrateful wretch! We gave you a home, we supported you, and this is how you repay us? I will make sure you regret this decision. Mark my words! Regret? The only thing I regret is ever getting involved with your despicable family. Do you think your son is precious? Well, in my eyes, he's nothing more than a waste. A mama's boy, so cowardly that he didn't have the courage to stand up and protect his own wife. Instead, he joined forces with his family to bully and mistreat me. A man like that? Even if I were to give him away for free, I wouldn't take him back. You think you can intimidate me with your empty threats? Well, let me tell you something, Scarlet. I am stronger than you think, and I will fight tooth and nail to protect what is rightfully mine. We'll see about that, Emma. I swear I'll haunt you. I'll beat you up. I won't rest until... Until what, Scarlet? Until you bring more chaos and misery into my life? I've had enough of your toxic presence and your attempts to manipulate and control me. You can try all you want, but I won't let you destroy me any longer. I'm done wasting my time on you, Scarlet. I have better things to focus on than your petty threats. From now on, I will build a life free from your toxicity and negativity. Goodbye, Scarlet. May we never cross paths again. After two days of relentless banging on the door, Max's family finally managed to force their way into home. Feeling cornered and desperate, I decided to take matters into my own hands. I immediately contacted the police and explained the ongoing situation. The authorities arrived promptly and took control of the situation, ensuring my safety. I provided the police with substantial evidence of my claims. I presented the loan papers, proving that Amanda's family had borrowed a significant amount of money from me. As a result, I was able to recover $100,000 from them, putting an end to their financial obligation. Furthermore, I also spoke up about the abuse I had endured. I showed the police the text messages from Max's mother, in which she threatened to harm me physically. 
I also shared the incidents of mental violence inflicted upon me by Max's brother-in-law. The evidence was compelling and undeniable. As a result, legal action was taken against Max's family. They were issued a restraining order, prohibiting them from approaching me and my home within a three-kilometer radius. Additionally, they were required to pay a substantial fee as compensation for the emotional damage inflicted upon me. From that point forward, I focused on rebuilding my life. I surrounded myself with supportive and caring individuals who uplifted me. With the compensation I received, I was able to start anew, pursuing my passions and finding happiness on my own terms. While the scars of the past remained, I emerged stronger and wiser. I learned to trust my instincts, stand up for myself, and prioritize my well-being. The unfortunate events had taught me invaluable lessons about resilience and the importance of self-love. In the end, my story was not just one of survival, but of triumph.